are going to continue reading where we left off yesterday. We are reading in Parashat Emor, page Sadiq Chet Amud Bet, page 98b. If you want to follow, we were reading that Rabbi Yitzchak was uh, about to explain a verse in the book of Tehilim talking about the mitzvah of uh, Rosh Hashanah. The mitzvah of Rosh Hashanah, of course, is to blow the shofar. And the verse in Tehilim says, Tik'u b'chodesh shofar, b'kesel yom chagenu. You blow the shofar on the suspicious month when we are celebrating this day of uh, holiday. And we started by saying that Rabbi Yitzchak said, let me first start with some praises of the nation of Israel before I explain the verse. And the praises is that happy are the ones, this nation, that Hashem chose us to be so close to Him. And uh, we have to appreciate the fact that the Kadosh Baruch Hu sifted us, so to say, from amongst the nations and brought us so close to Him. There's uh, one way that I, one uh, explanation that I didn't really explain yesterday, but many times when we find in the Torah commentary that says, Ashrehim. We know the famous quote with from Rabbi Akiva, Ashrechem Israel, the happy you are, the nation of Israel, that the Kadosh Buhu decided to be so close to you. When we find in uh, different places the word Ashrechem or Ashrechem, happy are the ones, it's also hinting to the potential that at all time we can be in a very high level, spiritual level that is called Osher. Osher in Hebrew is uh, happiness. Ashrei is also coming from the same root, Osher. And we constantly have the potential of being in the highest level in the spiritual realm. It all depends on us what we decide to do. It. Each and every one of us has a very high potential at any given moment to be in a very high spiritual level. You choose if you want to be holy, if you want to be connected to the junk of the world. But nevertheless, Abiyosi says we should be appreciative and happy for every given moment that Hashem has chosen us as a nation. And besides that, that we have the potential of any given moment reaching to very high levels in the spiritual world. We were talking about that the schut that we have being from this nation is not necessarily because of our actions. Because Hashem chose us before we did any actions. And really the merit that stands for us is the fact that our forefathers did the hard work and we're just tagging along. That's why in so many times you see that we are mentioning our forefathers and events that happened in the past to stand for us as a merit. We say now every day slichot. What do we keep saying all the time? If you read the, the actual words and you understand what we're saying, we're constantly uh, 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 bringing to memory the actions that Avraham and Yaakov did and David and Shlomo and, and just in the slichot, look how many paragraphs we're talking about the Akedah, about the mitzvah about the test that Abraham Avinu was about to sacrifice his son and how they both went willingly and we constantly hold this as a merit for us every time that we pray three times a day we mention Elokei Abraham, Elokei Yitzchak, Elokei Yaakov we're constantly using the schut of our forefathers to emphasize the merit that we are so to say riding on that wave but nevertheless uh, we started talking about yesterday very briefly that Abraham, Yitzchak and Yaakov were, so to say, pulled out from impurity. And uh, after all, we know that Abraham Avinu came from Ur Kasdim, a place of idol worship. And uh, like, uh, like uh, Hashem pulled him out from this place of impurity and brought him to where he brought him. So uh, we started explaining the fact that, that Yehoshua mentioned that to the nation of Israel after they crossed the, the river comes a big question what nobody knew about it nobody knew that Abraham Avinu came from the other side of the river he came from a place of idol worship you're talking about here a distance about not le not more than 400 years they knew exactly what's going on they knew exactly the history the nation so much more so Yoshua why specifically the verse that was said by Yoshua that Abraham Avinu came from the other side of the river talking about coming from a place of impurity and idol worship. So we started explaining in a more Kabbalistic term, what does it mean, the river? The river was referring to the Sphira of Bina. And from the Sphira of Bina, 
everything is manifested into the world of Atzilut, and Yaakov and Yitzchak and Abraham coming from the Sfirot Elyonot, they are all rooted in the Sfira of Bina. And when it says be above the other side uh, the, of the river, it's referring to that they, they rooted in the Sfira of Bina. And when they started to manifest into the Sfirot, then they came from the Sfira of Bina. Abraham went to the right side, to the side of Chesed. Nitzchak went to the left side, to the side of Gvurah. And Yaakov went to the middle side, to the side of Tiferet. And yesterday we gave the whole explanation about the structure, why the forefathers came specifically from the Sfira of Bina, and where and why they, so to say, manifested into the Sfirot where they parked. This is kind of what we talked about yesterday. Yesterday I mentioned that there is a commentary by the Arizal that can specifically be found in Shara Kavanot. When I went through it today, I found that it's no much of a point to really going through it. It will take us a, a long time to actually explain because he's talking in a very deep way, specifically about each tekiah, each blow of the shofar, from where it originates from. And what happens at the moment that we're doing the tekiah, the shfarim, the truah, there are three types of blowing of the shofar. And he goes into really depth into it, and I think that, I mean, it's extremely interesting, but it's a more of a higher level, and to really relate with what it means will take much more time to explain it. I said, I think that we should go through this Ma'amar in the Zohar. If we have more time, or maybe during uh, Rosh Hashanah, we can talk more about it because it's uh, a little bit more of a higher level to really understand what he's talking there. The Rizal is talking there in a very high form. But nevertheless, to kind of summarize it in two words, is talking how the first type of the Tkiah, which is called Tekiah, when the blowing of the Shofar sounds like this is Tkia. This is referred to Avraham Avinu, coming specifically from the side of Chesed. Then there's Tkia, then there's Tkia and uh, the Tua. The Tua is the tut, 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 tut. This is coming from the side of Gvura, from Mitzchak. And then there's Tua, the tut, tut, tut. This is coming from the side of Tiferet, and this is coming from Yitzchak, from Yaakov. And he explains that more in, in depth. What does it really mean? I think we should now not go so much into it because the, the, the way he's talking is very, very high level uh, Kabbalah terms that it's, I'm not saying that it's beyond our understanding, but it will take much more time to explain every little thing. So I think we should skip this part. Anyways, it's just a commentary of the Rizal. We can go one step forward and continue in the Zohar. And also, this is also going to explain a lot to us. What's very interesting here then uh, if we have time to go through it, then uh, it's very interesting if, if you want to go by yourself and looking in the Shara Kavanot, that can be found in Drush Chet. Specifically there, there's an a explanation coming from the Arizal, but also more, uh, 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 a more deeper commentary from the Rashash. It's actually very, very interesting for the ones who can actually relate with the terms. And, uh, but nevertheless, we're going to continue with the Mamar of the Zohar, and that also will explain it in a very thorough way, just the Rizal comes to more uh, deepen the thought. But nevertheless, we're going to continue uh, where we left off. And if you want to follow it, this is Parashat Emor, page Tzadik Tet. This is 99, Amud Aleph, 99a. The line starts with Rabbi Abba. Rabbi Abba was one, another one of the students. Uh, we started with Rabbi Yitzchak. Now Rabbi Abba comes and he explains and it goes as follows. Rabbi Abba, Hava Yativ Kame de Rabbi Shimon. Rabbi Abba used to sit, he, uh, he sat in front of Rabbi Shimon. Of course, we're talking about Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai. Amarle, and he told him, Ha zimnin sagin sha'ilna al hai shofar maika ka mairi. How many times have I uh, asked you, my master, about the secrets behind the shofar? And what is the reasons for the blowing of the shofar? For us, it looks like some type of a weird uh, historical act, taking an animal, slaughtering it, breaking off its horn, and then uh, drilling a hole in it. There's a whole uh, uh, process how you do a shofar. And the shofar that you buy in the store is not how it came from the ram or for the animal. It goes through a process. 
Nowadays, they're much more uh, nicer looking. They warm up the shofar so they can kind of squeeze it and make a nice shape out of it. It will be a little bit uh, uh, a nicer angle. But nevertheless, when you're thinking about it, it looks like some type of ancient uh, way of communicating, taking a horn and blowing into it. But nevertheless, there's much more going in behind it. Specifically that we have different forms of blowing. So Rabbi Abba says to his master, Rabbi Shimon, how many times did I ask you to explain to me what is the secret behind the shofar? And what is the reason? And up until today, it doesn't matter what you told me, it doesn't resonate in my mind really to understand what you're saying. Amarle, Rabbi Shimon answered to him, Vadai, of course, hai hu berira de mila. Of course, this is the, 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 the words that you choose to say. <clears throat> what does it mean? Vehu, the Israel ba'ayan be'yom adedin ha-shofar v'la keren. The nation of Israel, they need on the day of judgment to take a horn and to blow. The horn, of course, is the shofar. Why? Why specifically on the day of judgment we have to take a horn of an animal and to blow it? Begin the Keren Hait Yada Ban Atar Ihu. Why? Because the secret of this horn is known in a certain place. And what is this place that is talking about the secret of the horn? The Hainu Bemalchut Shimidat Adin. This secret is hidden in the Sphira of Malchut. The, the, the Sphira of Malchut is a manifestation of the Midah of Din, of judgment. Ulit Dabka Dina La Ba'ena. And in order for me to attach myself to the Midat Adin, why would I want to attach myself to the Midah of, of Din, of judgment? I would try to get away from Midat Adin. Midat Adin is the attribute of judgment. <clears throat> so he says, that when I want to uh, uh, attach myself to the attribute of Din, why? I want to arouse the judgment of the Malchut. Why specifically I want to do that? And why specifically on Rosh Hashanah? When I blow a horn, in minaroi, this is the most appropriate thing to do. When I blow the shofar, what happens is, is that I'm arousing the mercy rooted in the, on the sphere of Bina, and now all the judgments that are placed in Midat Adin, in the Malchut, they sweeten. I sweeten the Dinim. So, to say it in simple words, the Midat Adin, the attribute of judgment, is aroused and powerful on Yom, Yom Rosh Hashanah, because that's Yom Adin, that's the Day of Judgment. Now what do I need to do? I can't annul these Dinim. I can't argue with them. Can I argue with something that is the truth? I can't. But at least I can sweeten them. So if now I'm now uh, guilty in something, the best way to do is just to say, you're right, who am I fooling? I, I'm guilty as charged. Uh, I, I raised my hand and said, I admit. So I can now uh, uh, deny, well, it wasn't me. I didn't do anything. Now how ridiculous will I look? So the dinim, I can't remove them. But I, one thing that I can do is I can sweeten them. How do I sweeten them? Specifically, with the blowing of the shofar. Why dafka the blowing of the shofar? Because the shofar, the blowing of the shofar arouses the mercy that is rooted in the sphere of Bina, and now the mercy overpowers the judgment, and the judgment becomes sweeter and sweeter and sweeter. So, okay, this is not necessarily something that I can relate with, but this is the answer. Aval, but, ha teninan, we have learned, Ki bemilin, in the words of the prayers of Rosh Hashanah, uve ovada, and also in the action, what is the action that I do in Rosh Hashanah? What's the mitzvah that I do? It's blowing the shofar. Ba'ena le'achaza ulit abramilin setimin. We have to really look and to arouse the hidden secrets that are in the world above by my words and by the action of blowing of the shofar. When we read the Sidur, when we read the Machzor, we think that it's just some type of uh, somebody who sat 3,000 years ago very bored and started writing all sorts of things. This is not the way it is. Rather, 2,500 years ago, give or take, when the Anshei Knesset Agdola, 
they sat down and started writing down the Sidur, the Machzor, all the prayers. They were a very high level individual. They had Ruach HaKodesh. And they knew in their spiritual level how to put words together that as a combination will affect something in the world above. The way for us to understand and to relate it, you have now a safe. In the safe there's a lot of valuable stuff. Sometimes you see these videos online that uh, a robber will come and rob a store. You see the, the security camera. And instead of having the person open the safe and give me the stuff, they take the whole safe, the whole box they take with them. How do they open the safe? I don't even know. But nevertheless, the safe is there to keep something valuable. You don't put in the safe fruits and bananas and vegetables. Rather, you put their money, you put jewelry, you put documents. Same thing in the world above, there's a spiritual safe. And in the spiritual safe is hidden a lot of valuables. And Sheikh Neset Agdola, the sages at the time that they were compiling the Sidurim and the Machzorim, they had the Ruach HaKodesh to give us the code how to open the safe. And the code is words. The code is not numbers and the code is nothing else but words. And when you have a certain group of words together, like a combination of a safe, you want to open the safe, you need the numbers. If you're missing one digit of the safe, it's not going to open. So you need the same thing here. So the words that we're reading, this is not only for Rosh Hashanah, it's every day that we pray. That's one of the many reasons why the prayer is exactly the same every day. And not every day, something different. We do have some of the days we change a little bit of the prayer, a little bit of additions. But the prayer is every day the same, same thing here. He says, you have to look at the words and the words are concealing in them hidden messages that can be found at the time of Rosh Hashanah. Not only the words, also the action of the blowing of the shofar. Now he continues and he says, Tachazi, come and see. Kadahu shofar When this shofar is blown in the world above, everything that there is in the world below, there is something going on exactly in the world above. Everything in this world is a reflection of what's going on in the world above. So when I do something here in the world below, I'm activating something in the world above. The parable that the Zohar gives is that imagine now you have a, this, this long, long, long rope. When you're shaking the rope in the bottom, then the rope on the top also is moving. Like they do with those big uh, bells. You sh sh pull the one in the bottom and it r moves the bell. But nevertheless, even if it's not connected to anything, eh, to a bell, Rather, the rope is connected to something above. The second you shake it from the bottom, the above also is moving. Which means that when, do, when, we, when we do something in the world below, it's moving something in the world above. So, since there's a shofar in the world below, there's also a shofar in the world above. And he says, when the shofar in the world above, what is the shofar in the world above? If you remember yesterday we mentioned, and many other times, that every sphira in the world above, specifically in the world of Atzilut, is built from all ten sfirot. So if you have the sphira of Bina, Bina includes in it Chochma, Bina and Da'at, Chesed, Gvorat, Iferet, Netzachot, Yesod and so forth. And every sphira will include it in ten sfirot. So the shofar that is placed in the world above is the sfirot of Netzach, Hod, Yesod that are rooted in the sphira of Bina. What does it mean? In Hiru de Cholabe, all these orot, all these lights, of the Mochin, what does it mean lights? It's not lights like a light bulb. The teachings of Kabbalah is referring to the term light. It means a, a He'ara, means something is shining from point A to point B. So it's called as light, not necessarily a bulb, a light bulb. Rather, it's a, a transferring of data, so to say, from point A to point B. If I want to now to teach you, if, imagine now you're sitting in front of a genius and he knows everything. If he's not going to open his mouth, you're getting nothing from him. Even if you're looking at him, he looks at you, you look at him, he looks at you, nothing's happening there. The person has to open his mouth and he has to bring some he'ara, some shine from his wisdom to his mouth to translate the thoughts into words and then he gives it over. If you are a worthy vessel, you'll understand what he's saying. If not, it will sound to you like gibberish, you'll sit in a class, you don't understand one word. So the giver is one component and the receiver is another component. When the giver is able to give over some type of a, a piece of wisdom uh, to the receiver and the receiver can receive it, then the giver is called He'ara, it gives, Ma'ir, illuminator. He illuminates and inspires. So, 
at the time, imagine now in the world of Atsilut, the Sphira of Bina, <coughs> the Bina in it includes in it ten Sphirot, three of them are Netzach Hod Yesod, and these are the Shofar Elon. this is the Shofar in the world above. During that time, all these lights, the lights again, not a light bulb, rather the transfer of information from one place to another, it says here, Kol HaOrot Shel HaMochin, all the light of the Mochin, Mochin is the definition of the Sfirot of Chochma, Bina and Da'at. And we know that the Mochin is compared to intellect in this world. In this world, the Mochin, we have the Chochma on the right side of the brain, the Bina on the left side of the brain, and Da'at is the back side of the brain. This is because how it's structured in the world above. So as this is happening, all these He'arot, these Orot of the Mochin, specifically rooted in the Zeir and Pin, Zeir and Pin, we mentioned already a couple times. This is um, uh, one of the definitions, the names of the Parzufim in the world above. Hamelubashim bahem, the Mochin is dressed in the Zeir and Pin. I'll explain everything in a second. I see already looking at me like Istalek. They get removed. Veyotzim miresha deza. They get removed, so to say, from the sphere of Bina, which is called the head of the Zeir and Pin. Valyadei ze. And by that, then the Bina, so to say, stays behind. This all happens specifically when? When we say the word Be'ahava, when we pray Tfilat Shmona Yisre. If you're looking at the words of Tfilat Shmona Yisre, it doesn't matter, Sfarad, Ashkenaz, doesn't matter the Nosach. There's a Mevarechet Amo Yisrael Be'ahava. When we say the word Be'ahava with love, of the Tfilat Shmona Yisre. This is also done in the Tfilah right before we blow the Shofar. Right before we start blowing the Shofar, also you'll find the word Ahava. This is when it happens. Now again, to simplify what really happens, imagine now the Sphira of Bina, and it's able to give energy into the Sphirot below. <clears throat> when it's giving the Sphirot this energy, the Kabbalistic term is not energy, rather or He'ara, but something is coming from the world above is able to enlighten something that is below. As we go through it, things will become much more clearer. Vekan mashikatuv ka dahu shofar v'chulu istalek hu shofar wa kinui lenehi deima. When we're talking about the word shofar, specifically in the world above, this is not the shofar that is a horn of a ram or an animal. This is not what it's referring to. Rather, it's a nickname of the sfirot netzachod yisod that are placed in the sphere of Bina. This is called Nehi Deima. So it's just a term. Later on we'll find out why it's called a Shofar. But nevertheless, it's not a Shofar that is manifested into this world. Still, it's in a very concealed way that it didn't form in a way that is manifesting into the world to be blown as a Shofar. Ve'efshar, the istalek the ke'amar ha'kavana, you can say that it's being removed. What does it mean? She'shovet ve'hainu lifnei atkiyot. That it removed means that it stops, the sphere of Bina stops nourishing the Svirot below, and that happens right before the blowing of the shofar. If you remember, I mentioned before, that in order for me to sweeten the judgment, the Bina has to now effect has to flow over the midot in order to sweeten the judgments. So now we're explaining that, just imagine that the Bina, in order to understand a little bit more of what we're talking about here, imagine now the Sfirot, don't imagine them in, in a way that's what you imagine up until now or not at all. Call, like now refer to the Sfirot as containers. Now you have a kitchen and you finish your meal and you want to remove everything from the table, where do you put all the food? You put it in containers. So the soup you put in one container, the meat in a different container and so forth. Now what happens is that the next day you eat it again. Uh, now you reduce the capacity. Not the capacity, rather the, the what's in the container. Now some people say, let's leave it, I don't want to do dishes. Some uh, 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 women, Usually it's the women. No, 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 move it from this container to this container. Why? Because there's another two inches here. It's a waste of space. Yeah, but you're making now dishes. So the same idea 
Imagine the Sfirot as containers. Now the Kadosh Baruch Hu wants to give something over. You can call it an energy, you can call it a shefa. It doesn't matter right now, it's less relevant. Just imagine that the Kadosh Baruch Hu wants to give something to us. He's a giver at the end of the day. If he would give too much of everything, we will collapse in one second. We're not going to be able to contain what Hashem wants to give us. So the Kadosh Baruch Hu wraps it in different containers. This type of effect, effect will go into this container. Love will go in this container. When I want to give love or show love to my child, what do I give him? I don't give him a smack. I give him a present. I give him a toy, maybe uh, uh, something sweet to eat. But when I want to show my son uh, severity, I want to educate him, that's when the smack might come. Or the raising of the voice, or the restriction of, you can't do this. So, uh, same thing here. The Galosh Buhu wants to give us love. It's dressed in the Midah of Chesed. This is one container. This container, imagine now a box of cherries. Something sweet, something good. Then the Kadosh Buhu also wants to restrict something. So he will put it through the Midah of, of Gvura. That will be another type of uh, container. This will not come in something sweet. Rather, it will come in something severe. So this is the idea. If you want to imagine in your minds the Sfirot, don't imagine it as something Kabbalistic that you can't fathom in your mind. Just imagine different containers that when a Kadosh Baruch wants to give something over, he needs to contain it somewhere that it will be able to actually hold it. If the container is not suitable for the content, well, how would you say? Content or continent? No. The content? Okay. Contents? Okay. So if the container is not suitable for the contents, the more good is the container. That's the problem that Kadosh Baruch already had before he created the world the last time. That the light, the content, was too great for the containers to hold them. So it's almost like taking boiling hot soup and putting it in some type of plastic that will melt on the spot. So what's going to be the result? The container just got destroyed and the content is spilled all over the place. So the Kadosh Baruch created specific con containers to contain the light. And again, it's not a physical light. Rather, it's, uh, I will call it in our terms so we can relate with data. And now, nowadays of age, everything is about how much data you have. You go, you better buy a phone, you, they tell you how much data do you want, you know, the size of the, the capacity. You want 16 gigs, 32 gigs, 64 gigs. Why do I need so much? Because you want to put more, more songs and more videos and more pictures and, and more this and more that. Same thing when you get a phone plan. They tell you how much data do you want? 10 gigs a month, 20 gigs a month. Why do, I, why do I care? You have more, you can receive more. Same idea, just try to take technology and relate it to, 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 to what we know. And from that you can learn a lot about the spiritual world. Again, the containers, the Sfirot that the Kadosh Baruch created are to hold in it a certain amount of data. And again, that's my terminology. Don't, don't, don't take now this term and say, oh, the spirit is data. I just like to, re, to compare it to in, uh, 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 terms that we can relate with. Now, each one of the containers, each one of the spirit will hold in it a certain content. Specifically in the content of Bina, this is one of the highest of all the intellect of the Mokhin. It contains in it a very high level of mercy, of Rachamim. Now the world was created with mercy, with love, with judgments and so forth. Right now we're trying to figure out why the blowing of the shofar is what's going to sweeten the judgment. Now take two steps back, why would there even be judgment? So go four days ago, we read the parasha, we were sweating here and trembling just hearing the curses that the Torah had to tell us. If chas v'shalom, I look to the wrong direction, then obviously the Torah also knows how to be very severe and say, I'm sorry to tell you, you're going to take a wrong turn. This is going to be a very sharp reaction. It's going to be a strong reaction. Just know that. Now, <clears throat> the Kadosh Baruch who created the world in such of a system that when I do a certain action, I can arouse a certain energy on me. If I do a positive action, an act of kindness, then I will arouse on me uh, energy of kindness. If I do a negative action, I will arouse on me a judgment. Nevertheless, we talked about it two days ago, that on Rosh Hashanah, the Samech Mem, the Satan, the devil, has the power, and not only the power, the permission to pull a judgment on us. We just learned that on uh, Sunday, I believe. 
you missed the class, go and look at it online because it was a very powerful class teaching us a little t tip how I need to approach Rosh Hashanah. But nevertheless, we read that the Samech Mem, he's the, the devil himself, he gets permission to come and prosecute. Why? Because that's how Hashem created the system. He created a system of judgment. Now if there's a system of judgment, it has to be fair. It has to be a prosecution and a defense. So the prosecutor now has a little bit uh, extra hand here. So since the dinim are stronger, the, the judgments are strong because of our action, it has to be some, tampa, some type of counteractive. I have to find a way how to sweeten the dinim, and that is placed in the shofar. And right now we're trying to dissect and explain why specifically the shofar. The shofar, Aelion, the supreme shofar, is called Netzach Hod Yesod, the Sfirot of the Sphira of Bina. Bina is the root of mercy. That's where it's, uh, it's uh, 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 rooted from. And by activating that, we're able to bring down this mercy through the Sfirot to eventually sweeten the judgments. This is, I would say, a very quick explanation of what we read before that wasn't so clear. And now we continue. Ve'al kol panim, istalek dehacha eino, ratza lomar klal shekul ha-shofar ole ve'kala mevin. The fact that Bina is affecting the Sfirot below where it says istalek, it removes and, and now it's not, so to say, parked in Bina anymore, rather it's removed. It doesn't mean that it's, uh, now the Shofar is considered the sphere of Bina. I know now things are not 100% clear, but let's go through what he says here, and then at the end everything will be clear. <clears throat> we said in the beginning that the Mochin is being removed from Bina when it's affecting the Sfirot below. What does it really mean that the Mochin is removed? Each and every one of us, at least most of us, they have uh, an intellect. The brain is working. And the brain is divided into many different components. When do you see that the Mochin, the intellect, is not working? I know uh, some will want to say that in some people you see it all day long, <laughs> but we have to be a little bit serious. When do you see that the mochin is removed? When the person is sleeping. When the person is up, he's interacting. You ask a question, he answers a question. The person is, uh, is uh, functioning. Take now the biggest genius in the generation. Go and ask him a question while he sleeps. You think you're going to get an answer? You can whisper into him in his, in his ear a question. All you're going to get is... This is where the mochin... This is called Siluka Mochin. The Mochin, the Chochma, the Bina and Da'at are removed. So what happens? There's a body there. The body is breathing. The body is functioning and alive. But there's no intellect. So that happens at the time of sleeping. Now, sleeping, again, everything that happens in the world below is a manifestation from the world above. Sleeping, the word Sheina in Hebrew, is equivalent to Siluka Mochin. That the Mochin is being removed from the kli, from the container of Chochmah, of Bina and Da'at. That's why in the world below, there's even this, the idea of sleeping. Because technically, it shouldn't be idea of sleeping. It should be completely annulled, this whole thing. It's a waste of place. You don't need a bed, no sheets. It's what a waste of time. A third of your life you're sleeping. Technically, it's a waste of time. So, but since there is the idea in the world above that the intellect, the mochin, will be removed from the sphira, and then will be a matzav, a situation of shena, of sleeping. Same thing it manifests in the world below. So when it says that in the sphira of Bina, the siluka mochin, the energy, the, the content, is being removed from the container, what will be the result? Nam, nothing, shena, sleeping. So it says here, in the beginning, when the mochin is removed from, it says here, avem, this is referring to chokhmah and Bina, Specifically, when it's re re where it's removed from, from the Ziran pin. Why? Before the Netzach Hod Yisod entered into the sphere of Bina, which is called in Kabbalah, Ima de Nukba, the mothers coming from the female side. As, then what happens? The Zachar Nekeva, the Zun, this is the Sfirot of the, the right side and the left side. Shnehem and Besod Hashina. They both are affected by, by sleep. When there's a siluka mochin, it's going to be falling asleep. Now, you know, I always joke that the camera is always on me. 
camera should be to that direction always. We should have a dual camera, one here, one here, to see the reaction of the crowd. And sometimes you see classes and there's a lot of siluka mochin. Everybody's in a, in a different uh, sphere. This is called siluka mochin. You go down. You can blame it on being tired. But right now what happens is something shuts down in the world above. So... <clears throat> When I was learning in yeshiva, <laughs> so my rabbi has a high talent of putting everybody to sleep. Everybody. <laughs> so once somebody asked him, why everybody is sleeping in your class? He's like, well, I was, when I was a little kid, he, say, he says, when I was a little kid, then I used to go with my father, who his father was a great Rosh Yeshiva, and he used to go with him to classes. And he says, and I was three, four, five years old, I always used to fall asleep. So now I have a talent to put everybody else to sleep. So, but, but nevertheless, somebody asked me not too long ago also in a, in a lecture, he tells me, doesn't it bother you when people fall asleep in your class? So I said, no, it doesn't. It just, just means that the information that is being given to that person, there's an overload and the system goes down. So this is again, a siluka mochin. The container cannot hold the information. Or in our terminology, what is the hard drive crashes? The, the, the system crashes. A timeout. So again, when do we see this siluka uh, mochin? When the energy is being removed from the sphira and it brings a, a state of sleeping. That's how it's called in Kabbalah. Shena, sod ha shena. Umemele en ha mochin meirim labanim. Shemzun. And once the mochin is being removed from the bina, then the bina is an empty vessel. It cannot shine anywhere. Now take any container. Now let's empty, go to the analogy of the container. Empty the container. If I have an empty container and I go like this to pour something, something will come out? Nothing will come out. I just empty the container. How can it give anything? When the bina, there's a siluk, there's a removement of the mochin, of the energy, of the content there, then when it shines to another sfirah, nothing. Gets nothing. This is called, Ein ha mochin meirim labanim. The mochin cannot shine Mochin will be the Bina, cannot shine into the kids, so to say. The Zun, in, in the Sfirot Elenot, it's also, there's different Kabbalistic terms. Uh, and many places you will find that the Sphira of Chochmah is called Abba, and the Sphira of uh, Bina is called Ima. Abba and Ima is the father and mother. Why are they called father and mother? Because the same way that the job of a father and mother in this world is, the same way is in the world above. The fact that a man and a woman, when they unite here, what happens? They birth a child. This is not a, a, a mistake in creation. It's because it's a manifestation of the Sfirot of Chochmah and Bina. When Chochmah and Bina will merge, they will birth a Midah right away. That's how it works. So we find the terms that Chochmah is called Abba, Bina is called Ima, but the Sfirot underneath are also called Banim. Banim, it means children. The Sfirot underneath Chochmah and Bina are called in an acronym Zun. Zun is Zachar Venekeva. The right side of the Sfirot are called Zachar. This will be Chesed and Netzach. And the left side of the Sfirot will be Gvura and Hod. So these are called Banim. The Sfirot are not. If they're not shining, if there's nothing to shine, then they can't affect anything below. He continued and he says, Kedain Dina it al. Then what happens is the Din gets aroused. If there's no mixture of mercy coming from above, then the judgment becomes stronger and stronger and stronger. That's how it works. The Khur Sevan it taknu libe libe dina. And the chairs, so to say, of the Baidin of the Supreme Baidin are already uh, uh, they setting it up. How he's saying it in a metaphorical way. They now, there's a, they're calling the Beidin, so they start putting the chairs in an order for the judges to sit down. So it says here in a funny way, the chairs, they are being organized because there's about to be, how do they say, the court is uh, now in session. So before they announce the court is now in session, you have to set up the court. Now they're putting all the chairs together in the Beit Din of Shamaim, get ready to start judging the world. And this is where we have the verse, Why Kese? 
The verse that we read from Tehilim, Tiku b'chol deshofar, b'kese le'yom chagena. What do you mean b'kese? There's many different interpretations. One of them, kese, is coming from the word, the word in Hebrew, kise. Kise is a chair. Hashem, when He judges, He sits down. Not, not, not standing up. Next Sunday, Be'ezrat Hashem, we're going to say a very long session of Slichot. This Sunday, because it's Rosh Hashanah. After the session of Slichot, we pray a Shacharit, and after that we do a, 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 an act that is called Hatarat Nedarim. Uh, no nullification of the vows. You need a minyan of men. We all sit in a form of a Beidin. You need ten men. One stands up and he confesses. And he says, I have took on myself vows and I did not fulfill them. Some of them I know, some of them I don't know, and so forth. And the rest of the nine Dayanim, the judges, they annul the, the, the vow. And the, the judges have to sit. The, the person who's confessing, he has to stand. And they're all the rest of the nine, they have to sit down. Why? Because when a Kadosh Bokhu judges, he sits down. If Hashem is standing up, there's no deen. So there's always going to be a kise. It has to be a chair. So when we're saying, Bakese leom chagenu, on that day of the holiday, Hashem is sitting on a chair and starts the judgment. And this is what it means, the shofar, veda shofar, this is the shofar, meaning that the Sfirot of Netzachot Yesod rooted in the Sfirah of Bina, Eilo de Yitzchak Ikrei, these are called the ram of Isaac, the ram of Yitzchak. If you remember, we mentioned yesterday, Avraham Avinu came to to the Akedah, he took Yitzchak with him. You know the whole story, no need to repeat it. Then, Avraham Avinu found the ram, he took it, slaughtered it, took his uh, horns, and one horn was served at the time of Matan Torah, and the next horn will be used, Bezrat Hashem, very soon when Mashiach comes. But nevertheless, this ram is called Eilo Shel Yitzchak, the ram of Yitzchak. What does it mean, Eilo Shel Yitzchak? Meaning, Tukfe de Yitzchak, the severity, and the extreme of Yitzchak, which what is Yitzchak? This is, means the Gvura. There's some, what's called Hidgabrut Adinim. Yitzchak is rooted from the side of Gvura. And at the time when there's too much Dinim, then the side of Yitzchak is being uh, empowered. Why specifically it's talking about a ram? Zohar explains, Ki Eyal Perusho Tokef. Eyal, a ram, means uh, 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 extreme and severity. Ki ima, the sphere of ima bina, ihi gufa rachamim, the sphere of bina is the body of mercy, ela, but, shedanin mitarin misitra, when the dinim, when the judgments are being awoken from that side, vehainu shemina nimshechinu mitgalin hadin bezun, the dinim nevertheless are also born or birthed from the sphere of Divina. And then they went, where are they going to be revealed? Not in the sphere of Bina, rather in the sphere of below. Where specifically? Netzach Hod Yesod the Ima. Then this Netzach, the Holy Yesod, rooted in Bina. And they're going to be dressed, Melubashim Habinot Vagvorot Avehem. They're dressed in the, the, the Bina and the Gvura specifically of the Chochma and Bina. We'll explain everything more. I know a lot of it is not so clear now. Hainu, what does it mean? Achar chiluf asheni shenesa betevat be'ahava. After we say the word be'ahava in the prayer, yesh bahem memhei uveovan deban shehem gvurot. This is what the Rizal explained, and we we uh, uh, jumped over it, explaining. We know very briefly to explain that the name of Hashem Yudke Vavke. The numerical value of the name Yudke Vavke is 26. But there are four ways to write the name Yudke Vavke with what's called Miluyotiot, that you write the letter, you actually write the letters. So Miluyotiot means that you write the letter. So Yud is Yud Vav Dalet. And He can be He He. But nevertheless, there are four types of Miluyotiot. So if you're taking the word, the name Yudke Vavke, in four options of writing the, the extensions of the Zay, you get four different numerical values. And these are four names of Hashem that we call Shem Ma. Ma means 45. Then you have Ban, 52. 
and you have Sag 63 and Ab 72. This is how you write the Miluyotiyot, how you would write it. Nevertheless, Nari was explaining how the Tkia is Ma and Trua is Ban and so forth. That's why maybe, maybe we should have gone through this uh, uh, intro, but nevertheless, that's where he says that when you're saying the second time the word Ahava, then you have a little bit from Shema and a little bit from Shemban. And these are all Gvurot. And both the name Ma and Ban are both Gvurot. Vehem nichnasim benukba, and they're all, they will get penetrated in the female part of the Sfirot. as that we're going to read in the, in later on. Veshamit gabrim adinim v'agvurot. Over there, the dinim and the Gvura is becoming severer and severer and severer. Vehem tocha nukba, and they're stuck in the female part of the Sfirot. Vehakol dinim ke mevoar b'emshech ha'mamar. This is all dinim, all judgment. And it will explain in the continuation of this Mamar. Tushbachte de Ahavahan, the Netzach, the Hod and the Esod of Bina. These are the praise of the Avot. We, if you remember, we talked about yesterday the forefathers. Avraham is rooted in Chesed, Yitzchak in Gvura, and Yaakov in Tiferet. Chesed, Gvura, and Tiferet are above Netzach, Hod and Yesod. So Netzach Hod and Yesod that we're talking about that are rooted in the sphere of Bina, these are the praises of the Father. The Mochin, the effect, the energy, the content coming from the containers of Chochmah, Bina and that are dressed into Chesed, Gvura and Tiferet. Ki, why? Hakelim shel Chabad, the vessels, or the term that I use, the, con the, the containers of Chochmah, Bina and that, Hem Michagat, and the, the, the dressed in Chesed Gvura Tiferet, Sha'alu Lesham. The Sfirot of Chesed Gvura Tiferet jumped, so to say, up. That's why when the effect came down from Bina, it jumped down and went to Netzach Hod Yesod, and it skipped Chesed Gvura Tiferet. Why? Because this is, the, this is where the fathers, the forefathers are rooted. So we're going to stop here, because the next part is a little bit long. I know what I was saying is not really sitting very clear in our mind yet but nevertheless we have to read through it all once we read through everything will be much more easier to to uh, understand what he's trying to teach us here uh, since it's a long we can squeeze it in into one class so Bezal Hashem I believe another two classes will be able to summarize what he's saying here the point is that we're trying to understand the mystical action that is happening while we're blowing the shofar. It's not just a piece of a horn that we blow air into it. Rather, there's something more mystical happening there. Now, when I understand what is happening right now when I'm blowing the shofar in the spiritual world, it will allow me and help me to focus on the right thing to make sure that I'm being included in the mitzvah. Because of the mitzvah of the day is the blowing of the shofar. If you're not really focused on what's going on, then how can you be included in that mitzvah? Needless to say that right now we are doing, remember I gave you the parable of pulling the rope from the world below, then it will move something from above. So something happening in the world below affects the world above. I want to understand mystically what happens during the time of the, the tkiyah so I can relate with it, so I can benefit from it. So just keep your head up a little bit high. Bezad Hashem. Uh, another class or two, we'll be able to put all the things together. I know so now some of it sounds like uh, uh, way above what we can understand, but we're kind of laying the foundation like as always. And Bezal Hashem, in about two classes, I do believe that things will become much more clear and it will be able to really explain in simple words what happens in the world above when we blowing the shofar in the world below and why specifically it's sweetening the judgments. And not, why, not only why it's sweetening the judgments, why I need to sweeten the judgments, and why there are judgments to start from, with. If Hashem is so great and merciful and love, loving, why do we need to start with the judgments to start with? Or that I need to sweeten them? So, but nevertheless, everything will be clear as we go. Mezrat Hashem will have a little bit more of a clearer background of what's going on while we're praying on Rosh Hashanah. Mezrat Hashem. Avi Hananiah ben HaKashah Omer, Atzah HaKadosh Baruch Lezakot et Yisrael, Lefichach Erba Lehem Torah Umitzvot. שנאמר אדוני חפץ אמן צדקו יגדיל תורה ויעדיר